John Cage was an American avant-garde composer perhaps best known for the quietest piece of music ever written. His piano composition, 4 minutes 33 seconds, calls for the player to sit in silence for 273 seconds, this being the number of degrees below zero on the Celsius scale of absolute zero, at which molecular motion stops. As Cage points out, there's no such thing as empty space or empty time. There's always something to hear or something to see. In fact, try as we might to make a silence, we cannot. Cage's 4 minutes 33 seconds breaks traditional boundaries by shifting attention from the stage to the audience, and even beyond the concert hall. The listener becomes aware of all sorts of sound, shifting in seats, riffling programs, breathing, a creaking door, passing traffic, a recaptured memory. Not everyone is convinced this is art. In his essay, Nothing, Martin Gardner wrote, I have not heard 4 minutes 33 seconds performed, but friends who have tell me it's Cage's finest composition. Sounds are all around us, although we're not normally conscious of many of them. Quieter sounds may be lost in the mix of louder ones, and human hearing is restricted to a narrow range of wavelengths in the same way that we can see only within a small band of the electromagnetic spectrum. Sound intensity is measured in decibels, a unit named after the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell. Roughly speaking, a one decibel difference in loudness between two sounds is the smallest difference detectable by human hearing. Like the Richter scale used to measure earthquakes, the decibel scale is logarithmic. Doubling the intensity of sound equates to an increase of just over three decibels. In going from a faint whisper of one decibel to normal speech at about 60 decibels, there's roughly a million fold jump in intensity. The quietest sound we can hear is generally reckoned to be zero decibels. But zero decibels doesn't mean zero sound. There can be negative decibels which apply to sounds that are even quieter than we can detect. In any case, zero decibels is only a rough guide to the threshold of hearing. Some people are sensitive to much fainter sounds, and our hearing is much more acute when we're young. Also, the sensitivity of our hearing varies across the complete frequency range from about 20 Hz, or cycles per second, to 20,000 Hz, which is possible for humans to hear, reaching a peak between 2,000 and 5,000 Hz. It's hard to find natural places on Earth that are completely quiet. Getting away from the noises of civilization is one thing, but there are still usually the sounds of birds or the wind to disturb the silence. A place without wind and birdsong has to be somewhere barren and sheltered, such as a volcanic crater. One candidate for the quietest place on Earth is Haleakala Crater on the Hawaiian island of Maui. The more or less constant sound level here has been measured at just 10 decibels, about the same volume as your breathing. The only place quieter would probably be underground in a deep cave, assuming there were no subterranean movements of water or drips from the roof. In space no one can hear you scream was the iconic tagline for the movie Alien. But whether you can claim that space is the quietest place in the universe is debatable. To survive in the vacuum of space, you'd need to wear a spacesuit and a helmet in which there's air and therefore sound. Take off the helmet and you'd be dead within seconds. Scientists, though, are a resourceful bunch and don't let such trivial matters as survival get in the way of a good experiment. To test the proposition that in space a scream will go unheard, a graduate student from Brunel University London and the BBC radio show The Naked Scientist teamed up to send a microphone and a speaker into the upper reaches of the atmosphere. A global invitation was sent out for people to record and submit their best screams, a selection of which made it onto the mission. Among the chosen yells was, Children, come and clear your room. 
by Noha, a mother from South Africa. Up and up rose the screaming satellite reaching a height of 33 kilometers where the atmospheric pressure is only about three thousandths that at ground level before the balloon carrying it finally burst. Just before this happened, Noha's exhortations to her offspring had faded to a barely audible whisper at the limit of what the mic could detect. Back on Earth are special facilities called anechoic chambers, which absorb almost all sounds made inside them. It was during a visit to one of these at Harvard University that John Cage got the inspiration for his 4 minutes 33 seconds. While inside the chamber, he wrote, I heard two sounds, one a high and one a low. When I described them to the engineer in charge, he informed me that the high one was my nervous system and the low one was my blood circulation. The walls, floor and ceiling of an anechoic chamber are designed and made of materials to absorb virtually all the sound energy falling on them. The only sounds a person inside can hear are those coming from their own bodies or voice that travel directly to their ears. The effect is extremely unsettling and few people can stand the experience for more than a few minutes. Some anechoic chambers are occasionally open to the public but visitors are generally not allowed in for any significant length of time without supervision. The longest anyone has stuck it out in one of these dead rooms is about 40 minutes. Well before that, however, most of us would find the sound of our own bones grinding, a louder and louder ringing in our ears, and our loss of spatial awareness, another effect of the lack of reverberation, unbearable. The ultimate soundless hell, sometimes described as the place where sound goes to die, is the world's most advanced anechoic chamber, Building 87, at Microsoft's research lab in Redmond, Washington. <laughs>